I'm hoping there's no serious injuries, but I hope, mm. you know, teams like Man City do end up with like 11 or 12 <laughs> slight niggles <laughs> going into our game. <laughs> but then be, be all right for the game after. That's what yeah, I'm yeah, hoping. Obviously, obviously yeah. just, just, just the 90 minutes I want them to struggle with. <laughs> this is the official Leeds United podcast. We went to Tottenham, who were third at the time in the Premier League, in their own backyard, and we beat them up. You know, we went toe to toe with them, and we came out with, uh, we came out looking and smelling and feeling fantastic. Like everybody can appreciate the good stuff that we do. Yeah. And you know, don't get me wrong, we're still a work in progress. That's normal. Every anybody knows that. You know, we've been back in the se- in the Premier League. This is what our third season now, so it's ex- expected for us to to have moments of of um, difficulties. Uh, and that's what we have in every game. We're not going to be playing like Manchester City every single week, you mm-hmm. know, when they're flying high. We're going to go through the ups, the downs. We're going to have great moments. We're going to have, you know, rubbish moments. But that's what makes us unique to 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 us, you know, to the footballing world. We've got um, Sam Greenwood, who, again, he's he's doing really, really well. He's forcing his way into the into the team. Now he's, he's going to be asking Jesse Marsh, Questions. Well, Jesse's going to be asking questions about himself, whether Sam's going to be ready for a continuous run of, of, uh, of games, of starts. Mm-hmm. Um, but all in all, I love to see the young players coming through and getting their, their game experience, but not seeming out of place. And that's, that's, that's the most important thing for me. So going back, is that's one of the positives that, that we've definitely seen. Well, I, you got Rodrigo with that, you know, the, his first oh, goal was fire, you know, really. just a lash, but then the... That third goal was just what a finish, and it was brilliant. And, and seeing that from him was was great. Um, fills me with a lot of confidence going forward. Uh, Somerville, the ability to, I mean, that pass was was behind him, to to drag that forward and that close ball control and then finish it was just that's world class. That, How that. much confidence is he playing with? Like he's, yeah. he's playing he's playing regularly now. He's playing week yeah. in week out. But I've noticed a big difference with him since William Onto's um, come on the scene as well. So they, they look mm-hmm. brilliant together. They've got a great friendship un- off the pitch a- alongside being on the pitch as well. And sometimes you just need that catalyst. You need something like that to be the catalyst for right. you to be able to propel yourself into um, to fulfil your, your, um, your abilities. And that's what he's doing. He looks so confident. What is that? Four goals in four games. Yeah. Four goals in a row. In four games in a row. Um, Flipping fantastic. The first that time is. in certainly Leeds history that four... The two players have scored goals in four consecutive games with Rodrigo and, and, and Rodrigo. Amazing. Um, yeah. So, you know, there's goals there. We know that. Um, we just need to stop conceding them on, on the other yeah. end, you know. Yeah. Mm. What I will say as well is the confidence of the team because, you know, we were in a real rut and we looked in a real bad spot and, and I was worried that regardless of how hard they were fighting, regardless of how much they wanted it, they looked, you know, a, a run of results like we had a, a team can very easily collapse into into poor performances mm. week in, week out. The rot sets in and suddenly you're, you're in big, big trouble. Um, and I know we won at Anfield and that was a big deal, but it feels like the players have, have found some confidence and some self-belief again. And yeah, okay, we still lost the game, yeah. but we're away at Spurs. Um, and, I, and I feel like that there's, a, there's a team in there that believes that they, they're actually not where they should be in this league. And that's a good sign. Are you satisfied with where we're at heading into this World Cup break? Um, um, if you'd have asked me three weeks ago before Liverpool, um, you could have fifteenth. Yes. I'd have said, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Um, I think at that point it was staying out of the relegation zone any any way, shape, or form. You know, I, I did not want to be in that bottom three going into the World Cup. Um, so yeah, I mean, you asked me then, and I'm ecstatic. If you asked me at half time against Spurs, where where I'm, I'm hoping we could be, then maybe a bit higher, but. Um, Hey, it, I'm, I'm, it's you know I'm, I'm not going to complain. I think six points in the last nine, I, I would have bitten, uh, bitten your hand off. So yeah, I think mm. I agree. You know, if you're Jesse now, um, obviously we're heading into a World Cup, so he's got this bit of a break with the bulk of the players. What are you thinking? He'll be taking stock on this first part of the season. What do you think he's thinking, and what is he going to be looking ahead? What's he going to be utilizing this time to do? Do you think, Bex? Just sharpening up on a couple of areas, like. The, the defensive elements, obviously, the defensive um, issues over the last couple of weeks have been highlighted naturally, which you would expect, like you mentioned before, before these last three games, the run of results we had, they weren't, they weren't the best. 
You know, there were a couple of individual errors um, that that caused us to concede a, a couple of goals. And again, against Spurs, you know, away from home, we scored three goals, but we conceded four. And that's not really, that's not ideal. Although the performance was great and the one or two of their goals probably should have. Uh, one of them definitely should have been mm. ruled off. But, yeah. you know, we, we could have easily come away from that game with a point. So in, against a top three uh, club pushing for a Champions League spot. So, you know, you, you've got to take all of these games with a little pinch of salt. Um, the World Cup break has come at a great time for Jesse. I would say a, a week or two, a couple, give the boys a couple of weeks off, a week and a half off, and then get back to it. Let them reset, refresh their minds, enjoy it, get excited about watching football as a football fan, not only as a, a football player. And then just work on those 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 few elements, those few areas that, that we feel need ever so slightly tweaking. You know, we're, look, we're not far off being a, a brilliant football inside at the front and at the back. It's just a matter of a couple of minor issues, a couple of minor tweaks that need that need tweaking. And we'll get that. You know, we'll get a couple of key players back as well. Um, when we do come back, I think the next game's the 28th, Man City, isn't it? Um, uh, yes. So 28th of December. Looking, nice, easy yeah, game. Yeah, so looking forward, look forward to, to yeah. Forward no. to, yeah, no, Tyler Adams. Haaland would have a nice, <laughs> nice little rest as well, wouldn't he? So that would be <laughs> yeah. interesting. All leads, aren't we? The official Leeds United podcast. Well, let's talk about our lads who are heading to the World Cup. We've got Brendan Aronson and Tyler Adams uh, both heading to the World Cup with the US, obviously, and Rasmus Christensen with Denmark. And uh, Dan James, of course, out on loan, but he's going there with Wales. Did you see um, Tyler Adams' really sweet picture um, for his World Cup announcement of him as a kid? Oh, it was lovely. Oh, it? it was the yeah, cutest was really kid nice. in the world. And it was lovely <laughs> because you could see how much it... I mean, don't get me wrong, he still looks exactly the same, but he was a really cute kid. Um, and you could see how much it meant to them. But what, what are you expecting from our lads out there, Bex? First and foremost, most importantly, I just want them, uh, all four of them, to come through the, the yeah. tournament yeah. with great experiences, but unscathed in terms mm. of injuries as well. Um, it's, it's a great opportunity for them to experience a World Cup Um Albeit in the in the winter rather than in the summer. I hope they all do well. Um, just not against England because they're both just not against England. Three yeah. of them are in our bloody group, aren't they? Yeah. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to be diplomatic I there know. as well. <laughs> just if they can just take ninety minutes off, and then the other yeah. two games they can be man of the match. Each other. Yeah, yeah, fine. Yeah. <laughs> Listening on together. It's frustrating for me. I, I naturally being a forward, being an attacker, I want to see attacking football. I know for a fact we've got the players in our arsenal to do that, to, to play that exciting brand, front foot football. But also Gareth, um, is he was a defender. So his thought process, as we've seen in the past, is not, and I wouldn't call it gung-ho, it's not uh, mm -hmm. an exciting front-footed, um, getting the opposition face, uh, attacking style of football. It's more of a, we don't concede, we keep it tight, and we try and get a goal on the counter, or you know, see if Harry Kane can get up there. What are you expecting from England? How far do you reckon England will go in this World Cup? <sighs> yeah, go on, be tough, honest, be honest. What do you reckon? Well, we're not going to win it. <laughs> Simple as that. Not so, gonna win it. so how far are we going to um, go? We'll get out of the group stages and then all depending on who we come up against. Yeah. I, I, I'm not entirely sure whether we're going to make it. Uh, we might make, we might win a game and then go out the next one. Tell That's us why we're not going to win it, Bex. Um, have you not seen all the other squads that are out there? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but they, they, have you seen how they play as well? Like yeah. you look at mm. teams like Brazil, for example, flipping heck, I saw their, their squad. Their squad is unbelievable. It's like a, an all-stars match. Are Brazil your winners? They, for me, yeah, they are. Mm, same. What about yeah. you, Matt? Um, I think they'll be very difficult to overcome. This is the official Leeds United podcast. 